Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here in His presence this morning. Amen. Always good to be in the house of the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer before we worship. Just worship with us. We learned a new song yesterday, so fair warning. It may be a little off, but I think we have a very good. Lord, we ask that you would touch in this place today. We ask that you would bless, that you would move, that you would anoint, oh God. We ask that you would help us, Lord, to minister to your people, Lord God. Bless and anoint in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus is the
Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Why don't we just lift our hands and love the Lord for just a moment. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our honor Hallelujah. and our adoration. Hallelujah. hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. Oh, hallelujah, we worship Jesus. You are so worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy, you are worthy Lord, of all glory. You are worthy.
Let's just love the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our love and our adoration. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated just a moment. Amen. Real quickly, let's remember Friday, February the 19th at 7 o'clock. That's the Midwinter Conference. And uh, we're not going to be able to make it in person in Wilberton. It's a five-hour job. I've already touched base with Pastor Taylor and uh, explained the situation. I said I can't shave two hours off my drive. But he did say they are going to live stream it, so we will be able um, to join them remotely. So we're going to meet down here at the church at 7 o'clock. We'll have some food, some games, and we will be able to participate uh, virtually in the midwinter youth service. Amen. So remember that, Friday, February the 19th. That's just around the corner. And then Sunday, February the 21st, we'll have our morning service here at 10 o'clock. And then at 7 p.m., we're going to meet at 816 Southwest G Avenue, which is just across the railroad tracks. Pastor Jarrett Wright will be hosting our very first uh, Unified Fellowship Rally of all the apostolic churches in town and in Duncan. And uh, we are just excited. Pastor George Malloy of Heavenway Apostolic Church will be ministering. And I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited. God is going to do tremendous things. Amen. So you want to be a part of that. I would recommend getting there about 15 to 20 minutes early so to make sure that you get a good seat because you're going to have Christ Center Community Church. Am I saying that correctly? Um, Heavenway Apostolic Church, the Law of Fort Seal First United Pentecostal Church, Grace Chapel Pentecostal Church, and Great Plains Apostolic Church. All represented there, at least. There may be more. So it's going to be a full house. And so if you want a good seat, I recommend getting there at least 15, 20 minutes early. If you want to get there earlier, that's fine. I want to introduce everybody, shake hands, hug necks, and uh, get around and greet one another. Amen? Amen. And then Friday, March the 26th, I know that seems like it's a long way off, but it's just around the corner, is our district uh, spring conference. We want everyone to try to, to do your best to be a part of that service. It starts at 730 and uh, it's a First Pentecostal Church in Yukon. Bishop Green will be hosting that. Everybody from the state of Oklahoma and including Joplin, Missouri will be there. It's a great opportunity uh, to worship with the body of Christ and meet new friends. It's going to be powerful, and I'm excited about it. So keep those dates in mind. Amen. We, won't, we don't want to forget those. Does anyone here have a testimony, something you would like to share to give God glory here this morning? I just want to thank the Lord that um, he's always an on-time God, and um, even on your darkest days, he, there's always a light, and I just want to thank him for always just being there for me. Amen. 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 Anybody else have a testimony you want to give God glory? I want to thank God for letting all of us be here together today. And Amen. Despite all of COVID and everything going around. Yes. Couple new strains has arisen, I understand. Amen. Amen. Um, so, Sister Rickard is almost at the end of her time for in the military. She's only got 15 months left. Um, and there is a position available at what is called the schoolhouse on Fort Sill where if she switches to that position, then once she's done with her military service, she could just switch into civilian service and be the same position. Um, but her superiors are trying to pressure her to have to go to Korea, which is a 13 month assignment. And um, because of some other family circumstances, that's just really unwise and everything. And we just need to pray that God will make a way where 
the Korea, where the Korea thing doesn't happen and she gets that position at the schoolhouse. So yes. she asked for us to pray for that. So remember her in your prayers in that situation, her supervisors and all that, whenever you pray. Amen. God moved miraculously once before here just a couple months or so ago and changed it to where she was not going to have to uh, deploy. And uh, so I know he can do it again. We just release our faith and call on the name of Jesus Christ. He's a God answer and God that answers prayers. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to give God glory. Uh, this morning I received a random phone call from someone I hadn't heard from in about two years. The last time I uh, met this friend was at her son's funeral yeah, up in Mustang. And her son was phenomenal. He was a soul winning machine. He was a guy that everybody loved. It's a packed funeral. I've never seen a funeral that packed. And uh, that was the last time I'd seen her. We used to go to church years ago. She used to pray in late. And she just, she called me this morning. I looked at my phone. I was like, what in the world? I thought something must be wrong. And she just, she called me. And she said, I was just praying before I left out the door to go to church. She said, God dropped him on my heart this morning. And I just wanted to tell you that God is with you. God is for you. God loves you. Keep on keeping on. Keep worshiping. He's got at the forefront of everything, and uh, God's got a plan. God's working all things for his good, and uh, the Holy Ghost just moved right there in the room, and uh, we were on the phone for less than four minutes, and I, I told my wife, I said, look at God. See, God's network is not broken. That's right. God still answers prayers. That's right. You That's can right. be praying in Timbuktu, and God drop someone on your heart, and all of a sudden, they just pick up the phone and say, Hey, God led me to pray for you That's today. Right. God's network is not broken. That's right. No matter what the enemy is saying and doing in these last days, no matter what he pulls out of his arsenal, God is still large and in charge. Right. Right. And God's church is still the most powerful entity on the face of planet Earth. That's right. A praying church and a worshiping church is more powerful than any bomb, any missile, any military tactic and strategy. God's people who are praying people are a powerful people. That's right. Amen. And I just want to give God glory for that. I want to encourage you today that if you're going through something and you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling, uh, you know, like no one can relate or understand, if you will just continue to pray, I guarantee you there's somebody that God has laid you on their heart and they are calling your name Amen. in prayer. Amen. They're Amen. lifting you up. And if you will just just continue to wait on God. You'll feel that strength. You'll feel that joy. And you'll feel that peace and that encouragement that can only come from God. Amen. 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 Anyone else want to testify before we get into the word of God this morning? Anybody? Amen. All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, why don't you go with me to the book of Joshua, chapter number three? Amen. Chapter number three. And I'm going to start reading at verse number 10. Joshua chapter number three and verse number 10. If you're there, when you're there, say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And Joshua said, Hereby. Ye shall know that the living God is among you. How many knows that God is alive and he's not dead? Amen. And that he will, without fail, drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Perizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you unto Jordan. Now, therefore, take ye twelve men out from the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it shall come to pass, when the people remove from their tents, to pass over Jordan, and the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and 
The feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks at the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city, Adam. That's an interesting city name, isn't it? That's a Bible study for another time. That is beside Zeratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off, and the people which passed over right against Jericho. And the priest that bare the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on the dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on the dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands one more time and ask the Lord to bless the preaching of his word. Amen. There's liberty in the house today. The Holy Ghost is here. Amen. Anything is possible. Anything that you need. Amen. Just release your faith and your worship to God right now. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name this morning. We ask you, Lord, to anoint the remainder of this service. Touch every heart, every life, every need, every situation is only you can. Ask you, Lord, to anoint me, Lord, this morning. God, speak to me and through me. Confirm your word with the demonstration and the liberty of the Holy Ghost. That you alone will receive all the glory, Lord. And be exalted in this house, God. We give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to preach to us this morning on this thought. Follow the stones. Amen. Follow the stones. I'm going to read nine more verses of scripture before I get into this as a continuation. In chapter 4, verse number 1, it says, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take ye hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones. And ye shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every man, he, uh, every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in the time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took up 12 stones out of the midst of Jordan as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. Amen. Someone tell your neighbor, follow the, follow the stones. This is one of two places in the Word of God that you're going to find a supernatural event that God began to move and part the waters. Amen. You'll find also that Elijah smote the waters with his mantle and crossed over. But uh, when it comes to the congregation of God, the people of God, that when it came to... Uh, the, the priest and the man of God and, and the congregation following. This is one of two examples and two places in scripture where God parted the water. You remember that in the book of Exodus, the children of Israel had been in slavery and uh, to, to Egypt for over 400 years. They were in slavery and, and they were in bondage and servitude and lived in inhuman and cruel conditions. 
And God sent to Moses and his brother Aaron. And Moses declared unto Pharaoh, let my people go. Amen. Amen. And he didn't just say, I want you to turn them loose. He gave them a reason. He said, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me. Amen. Let me tell you, the God of this world, whose name is Satan, he wants to keep you captive. That's right. He wants to keep Amen. you enslaved. That's right. He wants to keep you bound because as long as you're bound, you're not free to worship. That's right. As long as you're serving the God of this world, you are not at liberty to praise and worship God in spirit and in truth. That's right. The man of God came to Pharaoh and looked him in the eye and he said, God says, let my people go. Amen. Pharaoh looked at him and said, who do you think you are? And who's this God that you're talking about that I should listen to him? That sounds a lot like the world's culture in the year 2021. When we began to talk about Jesus and we began to talk about the word of God and share the scriptures with the unlearned and the unsaved, there's a lot of pushback and there's a lot of animosity because they say, who is this Jesus? Who is this God that you serve and why should I listen to anything that you have to say? But you see that they are enslaved Amen. spiritually to a God they don't even realize they're serving. That's right. They're walking in darkness while God is trying to call them into marvelous light. Amen. God is trying to break the chains in their life. He's trying to break the shackles. He's trying to liberate them, amen, and set them free. Jesus said, when the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. Amen. God doesn't want to just turn us loose, you understand. Amen. He doesn't want us just to be turned loose and, and walk chaotically. Every man doing what is right in his own eyes. That never worked out in Scripture. Right. But he's turning us loose that we may worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. John chapter 4 verse 24 says, God is a spirit and they that worship him, you have no other choice but to do it this way. Amen. And there's no other option. And there is no other avenue, there's no other pattern, there's no other mechanism. I mean, you must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's the worship God is looking for. And that's the worship God is, is seeking here today. That's the reason Jesus came and then to set us free when He died on Calvary's cross. Amen. A lot of people say Jesus came just to love people. Jesus came just to heal the blinded eyes and open Jesus. deaf ears and cleanse the lepers. Oh, no. The word of God is emphatically and clear in that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. What was lost? Intimacy and relationship and fellowship. In the garden that God created for man, and he put Adam there, and he took a rib out of his side, and he made him a healthy his wife, and he named her Eve. He made this garden just for them. God didn't need the garden. That's right. The garden was for man. That's the garden was for Adam and Eve, and eventually their, their children and descendants. It was a perfect paradise where there was no pain, That's right. no sorrow, That's right. no sickness, no death. That's right. They were immortal. They were going to live forever. Amen. In perfect paradise. Now, doesn't that sound wonderful? Amen. The Bible says in the cool of the day, God began to walk in and talk to Adam. And then they had fellowship. They had relationship. They had an intimacy there. That's what God wanted. He created man. He said, I created all of these angelic beings. And they have no choice but to worship me. I created all of these angels and the heavenly host of angels that sing hallelujah before the throne of God continually. They have to. They don't have a choice in the matter. He said, but I created man, amen, because he has a choice right. to have a fellowship and relationship right. with me. God's not going to force his will on anybody. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, God's not going to force you. God's not going to force you. Anytime someone says, if God wants me, Amen. To lift my hands. If God wants me to go to the altar, if God wants me to run and dance and shout, he'll just make me do it. I, I'm here to tell you straight out of the word of God today, no, he will not. That's right. God, That's right. God is not a rapist. That's God right. never forces anybody That's to do right. anything they do not want to do. That's right. God desires relationship with humanity. Amen. And they made a wrong choice in the garden. One day, you know, all of these days of choosing right, choosing to fellowship with God, choosing to, to converse with Him, choosing His fellowship and 
and relationship and intimacy with God. And one day, they made a different choice. They chose to disobey God. The Bible says that disobedience, rebellion is a sin, is as the sin of witchcraft. They made a choice to dabble in something other than walking with God that day. And they walked openly in rebellion, choosing to eat of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. That ushered in sin into the world. And from that point on, mankind was no longer going to be immortal. Amen. On this side of eternity. From that time on, there was going to be pain. From that time on, there was going to be sorrow and sadness and sickness and death. From that time on, there was going to be separation from fellowship and relationship with God. Because sin cannot dwell in the holy place. Amen. A sinful man cannot abide in the holy place with a holy God. And God said, I don't want that. So he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. He said, I love each and every one of you at Great Plains Apostolic Church. I love every one of you in the city of Lawton. I love every one of you, amen, on planet Earth. He said, I want a relationship with you. I want a, I want a fellowship with you, amen. He says, I've got to take care of this sin problem because nobody else can. That's right. amen. And in the fullness of time, God robed himself in a body of flesh and blood. He was God manifest in the flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us was preached unto the Gentiles. Amen. Received up in the glory. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. Offered His life on the cross of Calvary once and once only to pay the penalty for the sins of every last one of us. Amen. He knew every last mistake that we would make. He knew every wrong choice and decision that we would ever make. He knew everything we would say, everything we would think, everything we would do. He, he knew the rebellion. He knew the, the motives of our heart. He knew it all. And he said, I love you this much. I'm going to pay the price for your sin. I'm going to take the sin of the whole world on me and nail it to this old rugged cross once and once for all. Amen. John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Amen. 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 The Bible says, yet while we were in our sin, he loved us and he died for us. That's right. He didn't wait till we had our act all together. He didn't wait until we were perfect because it was impossible for us to become perfect That's right. outside of him. He took us in the middle of our mess. He took us in the middle of our sin. He said, I love you. I'm reaching for you. I want a relationship with you. Amen. I'm going to pay the price for your sin. What I need you to do is take the blood that I shed on this old rugged cross and apply it to your life. I need you to take this precious, sinless, spotless blood and put it to your own life to wash away your past. To wash away your sin. To wash away your yesterdays. Amen. To give you a clean slate. Amen. Amen. Some people say that that comes by faith. Some people say that comes by professing and confessing. No. The Bible says that the blood is applied through water baptism in the That's name right. of Jesus Christ. That's, That's where right. you take on the name of Jesus. That's where you take on the blood of Jesus. Paul said we are buried with him in baptism. Amen. We're risen with him, amen, through the work of the Spirit. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name to have the blood applied. That's that right. blood is what washes away our yesterdays. That's what washes away our past and it washes away our sins. Amen. It is a type and shadow, amen, uh, the, 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 the Red Sea that Moses and the children of Israel had to cross over. It's a type and shadow of water baptism in Jesus' name. That's right. When God brought the children of Israel out, he didn't say, I'm just setting you free, now run. He gave him a leader by the name of Moses. He said, that's my prophet. Follow him. And Moses went out of Egypt, and there was over a million Jews following him. Amen. And yesterday they were a slave, and today they have been liberated. Amen. He led them through the wilderness right up to the edge of the Red Sea. And he said, now what are we going to do? Amen. I can't cross that. We can't cross that. We've got little ones. We've got all of this. We can't cross over that water. And God said, Moses, 
Take that rod in your hand and you stretch it out over the water. Amen. And just watch what I'll do. Moses raised that water, rod over the water and the water began to part. There was a wall of water on this side and a wall of water on that side. And the children of Israel walked across the Red Sea That's on dry right. land. That's right. Amen. Amen. If they had got ahead of the man of God, they'd have drowned. That's right. If they had fallen behind the man of God too far, they'd have got caught up in the Egyptians that were pursuing them. That's right. But as long as they were following the man of God across, they walked across the, in liberty on dry ground That's because right. that was God's plan Amen. and pattern. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Here in the book of Joshua, we find another situation. That Joshua told the priest, he said, we're going over and we're going to take the city of Jericho. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to conquer the enemy and we're going to win a victory in the name of the Lord. He said, but there's one situation that we got to encounter first. We got to cross this river. That's right. He said, now we need the help from God in order, to get, in order to get across from this. So God said, well, here's the plan. You take the priest, you take the preacher. And you put them out in the middle of the water, carrying the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. And you tell the preacher to stand still. Do not move. Just stand there. And he said, and when they do that, the water will part on the left. And the water will part on the right. And the children of Israel will cross over on dry ground. That's right. Amen. That's right. And that's exactly what they did. The preacher went out into the water. The priest went out into the water. And they had the Ark of the Covenant, which represented, amen, the presence of God with them. Amen. And he stood still in the middle of the river. That's and the right. waters began That's to right. part on the right and on the left. Amen. It was dry ground. And the armies of Israel crossed over. And uh, Joshua said, now hold on. Let's not just get carried away in the deliverance Come and in the victory on. and the amen. miraculous. We need to pass this on to the next generation. We need them to understand that God is a miracle working God. Right. We need them to know and understand that God is a prayer answering God. Right. He's a, a God that can take yeah. the impossible and make it possible. Amen. He's a God that can take no way and make a way. That's right. He's a God that takes care of his people. He yeah. said, you pick up some stones yeah. and you lay them down in the middle of the river. Not just anywhere, but where the feet of the That's preacher right. stood. Amen. He stood firm. He stood in faith, uh, bearing the yeah. presence of God with him. He yeah. said, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to bow to this world's culture. I'm not going to yeah. bend over backwards. Uh, no matter what the enemy throws against me, yeah. no matter what attack from hell comes against me, I'm going to stand yeah. still. sense to me. Because you see, what we read about in scripture is not too far different from the world in which we live That's today. Right. That's right. We have questions being asked by our young people. Amen. In every generation, they say, why do we do this? Why do we believe this? Why do we say that? Why? Do we, why, you know, why? Isn't that a man-made tradition? Isn't that an outdated concept? No. It's a memorial. It's something that God set up as a precept and a statute. Amen. It's something that he set up in his word. You may not understand it all yet. Amen. But that doesn't make it irrelevant. No. You may not understand the full concept. You may not have the full revelation and understanding, but that don't mean it's all right just to write it off. That's right. Amen. Amen. God set some absolutes and some precepts and some concepts in his word. He said, you leave them there forever as a memorial so that one generation after the next, when they say, what meaneth these stones? Tell us what this is all about. Tell us why we run the aisles. Tell us why we clap our hands. Tell us why we raise our hands. Tell us why we lift our voice. Tell us why we talk in tongues. Tell us why we get excited in the house of God. Tell us why we get loud when we preach it. Amen. Tell us why we do the things that we do. Amen. Amen. Follow the stones. Amen. 
If we had the time, I'm not going to take the time to go to the scripture. But the Bible tells us don't remove the old landmarks. What's a landmark? I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia. And every time you had to build a fence around your property, you had to pick a corner. And that's where you started. Your property was surveyed and you, you started, uh, you got everything lined up and you, that was where you put your first stone. And that's eventually where you would drive in your first fence post. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the fence was built from that fence that's post, right. that landmark. Mm -hmm. The Bible says there are some things that were put in place a very, very long time ago. That's right. We may not understand it. We may not always make sense of it. We may not always be able to comprehend it. But you pull that fence post up, and the whole fence is going to come That's down. Right. He says, do not remove the old landmark. Let me say something. Just because something's passed from one generation to the next does not make it a man-made tradition. That's right. That's right. Do you understand that before we even had the written word of God in its form, that how, how much do you trust the word of God? Do you trust it? Amen. Do you believe Amen. this is the infallible word of God? Before we ever had it in written form, it was passed down verbally from generation to generation. That's right. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, and he wasn't anywhere in the Garden of Eden. God gave him this revelation on the mountain when he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. If you trust the word of God and you believe that it is irrefutable, it is unfallible, and it is a forever settled issue, trust it. That's Amen. Right. Believe the promises of God. Amen. Believe what the scriptures have to say and walk in it. Amen. Amen. It does not matter from generation to generation. They say, that don't make sense to me. I don't need that. That don't make any sense to me. I'm not going to walk in that. Let's get rid of that. That's just a man-made tradition. Be careful. Because some of these things are stones that God That's had a preacher right. set in the middle of a river. And he said, if you'll follow that, you will never get lost. Amen. If you'll follow Amen. this, you always go forward to victory. If you'll follow this, you'll always go forward and conquer the enemy. Amen. And win battle after battle. But if you say, who needs those stones anyway? Amen. And I'm going to go across my own way. You're never going to end up where God wanted you to be. That's right. That's right. Amen. Am I in the book this morning? Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 19. The Bible says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation. Somebody say foundation. Foundation. Amen. Of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. I want to tell you what the New Testament church is built upon. Not denominations, not man-made religion. It's on what the apostles of Jesus Christ, the 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, right. what they taught and what they preached. That's right. And Jesus Christ tied it all together. Right. Amen. Amen. Now. Anything that preaches and teaches and declares anything other than what the apostles preach is false doctrine. That's right. And I don't apologize for saying it because it's the truth. Amen. The church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That's Jesus right. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone to whom all the building fitly framed grow together into a holy temple in the Lord. Amen. See what he says. If you build on this foundation and we come together in a spirit of unity, he says we will become a holy temple unto That's the right. Lord. Amen. He's not talking about a structural building. He's talking about the body of Christ. That's Amen. Right. But you're not in the body of Christ if you're not building on the right foundation. That's right. Amen. Amen. In whom you are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. You see, this is a thing that has to be done through the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. I've been in this a long time. There's nothing that surprises me. There's nothing. I have seen just about everything there is. I'm here to tell you. I've been around the block. I know a thing or two, okay? Now, there are some things that can only happen through the work of the Spirit. That's right. I can't teach enough Bible studies to make it happen. I can't preach long enough, loud enough, often enough to make it happen. I can't do uh, enough programs and activities. I can't make it happen. The only way it's going to happen is through the work of the Spirit. That's 
One of those things is the revelation that there's only one God. That's right. Because our world says there's three gods. Our world says that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You're not going to find that terminology anywhere in the Bible. You're not going to see God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is only one God. The Jews believed emphatically that there was only one God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt worship the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's right. There is, is and always has been only one God. That's, That's right. right. The prophets, remember the prophets are also part of this foundation. That's why you can't do away with the Old Testament and say I'm a New Testament only Christian. That's right. Because you've only got part of the foundation. Amen. The Old Testament prophets work in conjunction with the New Testament, 12 apostles of Jesus Christ, and Jesus ties them all together as the chief cornerstone. That's right. One of the Old Testament prophets, Isaiah, said there's no God with him, there's no God beside him, there's no God after him, there's no God before him, there is none other Savior, there's only one God. That's right. Amen. I'm here to tell you there's not God the Father, there's not God yeah. the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's just God. That's right. And in the fullness of time, he revealed his name to us. God manifested in the flesh. His name is Jesus. That's right. But some people don't have that revelation yet. Because it has to happen through the Spirit. Amen. It has to. You say, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, it's not because I've studied the Bible all these years and I've been preaching all these years and been around the block. It's because the Bible says so. Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Oh, some say, some say you're John the Baptist risen from the dead. Some say that you're uh, uh, Elias, Elijah risen from the dead. Some say you're this, some say you're that. He says, well, who do you say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He wasn't saying you're God the son because he was a Jew and he only believed in one God. That's right. He was saying you are the manifestation of God with us. Isn't that what the angel told Mary? Thou shalt call him, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Thou shalt call his name Jesus uh, and Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Not a God with us, but God with us. That's right. He was saying that you are the Christ. Amen. And Jesus said, flesh and blood, intellect, and PhD. You're not 
going to get lost. Yeah. You're not going to find yourself walking through fog, not knowing which way is north, south, east, and west. Amen. Just follow the stones. Just walk where your predecessors walked. Amen. Walk in the scriptures. Walk in the word of God. Walk in the faith. Stand sure. Amen. Yeah. On the promises of God. Follow the stones. Amen. Amen. Can we lift our hands and love the Lord for just a moment? I'm almost done. Hallelujah. 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 If my pastor were alive today, he could tell you some stories about Nelson Grimmick. I wasn't always the, the easiest saint in the church. I'm just going to be transparent and honest with you. Sometimes my mom watches on Sunday mornings and she'd give you the thumbs up and say, hey, man. I was an inquisitive person and there was nothing wrong with that. I passed her welcome to I love her. Hey man, I would ask him questions a lot of times after church on Sunday. I would catch him. He, he had an artificial leg. Cancer had taken his leg and he had to walk around with a cane and he had to have assistance and he would go back to, uh, after service was over and they were dismissing in prayer. He would hobble back to the back of the church and he wanted to shake everyone's hand and hug everyone's neck before they walked out the door. Tell them he loved them. They needed anything to call him anytime. He just wanted to let them know that they're not alone. That's important. Amen. It's important that you know that you're not alone. Amen. And you're walking in your relationship with God. Pastor's here for you. Sister Grimmett's here for you. Amen. The whole body of Christ, we're here for one another. That's right. Amen. We stand together. Amen. We fight together. We thrive together. We're going to enter into the greatest revival Lawton has ever seen. And we're going to do it together. That's right. Amen. But I would catch my pastor after he shook everyone's hand. I would wait until he's done. And then I'd say, Pastor, I have a question. I'd say, I read this verse of scripture and I don't understand it. Can you explain it to me? And I did this my entire life growing up. The first 22 years of my life before I joined the army and was shipped off. Amen. By Uncle Sam. And he welcomed it. He said, yes, no problem at all. I would ask him questions. Sometimes in my mind, I would say, I'm going to get him with this one. And I would say, hey, pastor, I saw this, but you know, this says this. And so I think that this is kind of refuting this. And I don't think this lines up. I think I just found something that nobody else has found, a biblical error. And he would straighten me out in about 60 seconds and say, no, you, you read this right here. And then he says, now do you see it? I'm like, yep, yeah, I see it. Let me tell you something. I wasn't that smart. And ain't nobody ever been that smart to look at God's word and say, you're wrong. Amen. That's right. Amen. We are students of the word of God. Amen. We're ever learning, but we don't want to be caught up like Jambres and Jonas that Paul said. Amen. They were divisive people, and they were going into church to church. They would hop around from church to church, causing church splits and a lot of confusion and, and just creating uh, atmospheres of false doctrine and uh, uprisings. And, and Paul said, you know what? That spirit that was in Janus and Jambres, he said, they instigate all of these scenarios where people are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's right. That's right. Some people are always chasing revelation and they never get the truth. That's right. That's right. Because the truth is really not that hard. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Amen. He said, I'm the door, and if any man wants to enter into heaven, you gotta go through me. That's pretty self-explanatory. That tells me Oprah Winfrey's wrong when she says there's many paths to heaven. Amen. That tells me that all these other man-made religions and stuff, they're wrong when they say if you just be a good person and you just try to be a good community citizen, and you just have good intentions and you just try to live a good, clean life, you, you make heaven because God loves everybody. They're wrong. If you're going to go to heaven, you got to go through Jesus Christ. That's right. And it was Jesus Christ who said in order to be Part of the kingdom of God, part of the body of Christ, you must be born again of the water and the spirit. That's he right. said, if no man, he said in John chapter 3, verse 5, he says, Verily I say unto you, except or unless a man is born again of the water and the spirit, he cannot. That's right. 
Cannot what? Now, if Jesus says, I cannot, who am I to say, yes, I can? If Jesus says, you can't, who am I to say, oh, yes, I can? You see, Job went through a lot of stuff. You ever read the book of Job? It's depressing. And it seems like the long, some people hate to read numbers. I hate to read Job. There's a lot of good stuff in there. There's a lot of powerful concepts and principles, but I hate reading it sometimes because it's depressing. His three friends, they kept whispering things in his ear and trying to say, you're not right with God. You know, you believe this and you were wrong and God's mad at you and God's trying to pay you back and he, you know, you're really a hypocrite and you're really living this way and, and, and God knows it and so he's discovered you and so therefore he's killed your family and he's brought all these things on you. What friends? Right. Man, who wants a dozen friends just like that? Mm -hmm. I want someone that's going to sit down and if they don't, you know, understand what's going on in my life, don't say nothing. Just sit there and weep with me. The Bible says, weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. Amen. Right. If you don't know what's going on in my life, don't do nothing but just pray and weep with me if I'm weeping. Amen. But his friends, man, what kind of friends were they? And just one after another, what did they do? They kept prophesying. God, kept, God showed me that you're really a sinner. God showed me that you're really a hypocrite. God showed me that you're, you're, you're trying to look holy and trying to live this way, but you're really a, a little lion snake in the grass and all this and that. And God finally, toward the end of Job, said, enough. And God said, I'm about to take you three out of this world. You little lying, false prophets, hypocritical friends. He said, I'm about to shut your mouths for all infinity and beyond. And he said, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Humble yourself and ask your friend Job to pray for you. Boy, right. wasn't that a moment of humility? <laughs> They've been coaching him throughout the entire book. And this is what you need to do, Job. This is what's really going on in your life, Job. You know, God showed me this, Job. And all of them are lying. That's right. And finally, God says, enough. Quit saying, thus saith the Lord, when the Lord didn't say it. That's right. Quit saying God showed me when God didn't show you. That's Quit right. saying yeah. God revealed to me when God didn't show you nothing. And they kept lying against Job. And finally God says, you better humble yourself, shut your mouth, and have my servant Job pray for you. Otherwise, I'm going to take you out. Amen. Amen. That's a moment of humility. Amen. See, sometimes we think we're right and we're not right. That's right. That's right. The book of Job to me, some kind of, sometimes it's kind of depressing. Amen. But some things, they're only a work of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost has to, to reveal these things That's to us. Right. That's why Jesus said part of the Holy Ghost is not just speaking in tongues. It's not just to get our praise on and get excited and run and dance and shout and feel good. It's not just for our salvation, That's in right. fact. The Holy Ghost is supposed to be a comforter, which yeah. means in the middle of all hell breaking loose in our world, we can still have the comfort and Amen. peace of God. Amen. 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 But it's also to lead us into all truth. That's right. And that truth can never contradict the written word of God. That's right. Because God is not going to be two-faced. That's He's right. not going to say, this is what I said forever, settled in my word, but I've been given a revelation over here that says something different. He's not going to do it. That's right. So he yeah. said, verily I say unto you, John chapter 3, verse 5, except or unless a man is born again, he cannot. I'm here, to, I'm here, I'm on Facebook Live, I'm here to tell Great Plains Apostolic Church, I'm here to tell everyone who watches virtual, you hear Pastor G. I, I've preached this for 21 years, and I'm going to preach this until I take my last breath. There's only one way to heaven. That's right. That's right. And That's right. Jesus said it right here, you must be born again of the water and the spirit. That's right. He says, if you don't, you can't enter or even see the kingdom of God. That's right. There's no other way to heaven. That's right. You can't confess your way in. You can't profess your way in. You can't believe your way in. You can't be a good enough person to get in. That's right. Amen. You've got to be born again. Amen. Whenever they said, well, clarify for that, Peter. Tell us what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, but that was just for the apostles. For the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, how many in this place today are willing to call Jesus a liar? 
If he says you can't enter into heaven any other way, Jesus. I think that's pretty absolute. That's right. That's, right. that's why Paul said, amen. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, we are none of his. That's what it says. If I don't have the Holy Ghost, I am not yet a child of God. I'm not yet a son or a daughter Jesus. of God. You've got Jesus. to be born again because you don't join the church. You're born into the body of Christ. That's right. And it's the body of Christ. That Jesus Christ is coming for in the rapture of the church. Amen. Amen. There are people in every denomination, apostolic, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, even Catholic. We've got a lady on the Supreme Court right now. She's a Catholic, but they believe in speaking in tongues. And she professes, she said, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I speak in tongues. There are people in every denomination, I I'm convinced. Amen. That God has revealed elements of truth to, and they have obeyed Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Right. They may not come to an apostolic Pentecostal church, but that does not mean that they're not saved. That's if right. they obey Acts 2, 38, That's amen, right. they're born again of the water and the spirit. We be brethren. That's we're right. brothers and sisters in the yeah. Lord. But until they obey Acts 2, 38, we're not even related yet. That's right. And I'm sorry, but that's the word of God. Jesus is coming back, amen, for the bride of Christ, for the body of Christ. He says there's only one way. Paul said, amen, that there's only one faith, one Lord, one baptism. There's only one path to heaven. There's only one way. You see, our world is looking for easy believism. They're looking for another way, an easier way. They don't want to come to church. They want to sleep in on Sundays. They don't, they don't want to read their Bible. They don't want to pray. They don't want to have to do anything. They just want to say, I just believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose again, so therefore I'm going to go to heaven. I'm sorry. No, you're not. That's right. Yeah. Can I say that on Facebook? Like, no, you're not. I'm sorry. But the thing is, amen, today, now is the day of salvation. You still have an opportunity until the last trump of God sounds. Amen. 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 To humble your heart at an old-fashioned altar of repentance. And say, Lord, I'm a sinner. God, help me to change my life. Help me to do what you want me to do. Amen. I don't understand everything, God. But God, turn my life around. Change me, yes. Lord. And if you'll come down here to Great Plains Apostolic Church, I'll baptize you the Bible way in the name of Jesus Christ. Where God will wash away and amend every one of your sins. God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And guess what? You keep living for God. Stay ready. And when the last trump of God sounds, you are going up to heaven together. Yes. Yes. And in a twinkling of an eye. But it takes that. It takes that. And anybody that says otherwise, they're not telling you the truth. That's right. Years and years ago, I'm almost done. Years and years ago, we went to church somewhere between the North Pole and the South Pole. My wife knows exactly who, the, who, who we're referring to right here. Amen. She was a lady who prayed. She prayed a lot. She was a good person. And she was actively involved in the work of the church. And in time we did stuff, she was always one of the first one. And, and, and she, she was faithful. She went to that church for a lot of years. And she started running with some people that she'd met from another place here in town. And they got her confused. And by that, she started saying things. She would stand up in the middle of service, giving testimony. She said, God told me that I needed to be careful that I'm not deceived. Because there are voices of deception even in this church that are trying to confuse me with doctrine that is false, that is man-made tradition, and that is not truly what the Word of God says. She said that in the church we attended. The pastor would try to talk to her, and she got angry. She got very resistant, and she became very combative with her. With him, she would not listen to anybody, pastor talk to anybody. She just kept this, and she kept going down this rabbit trail. And she started becoming convinced that the pastor was her enemy and that that local church congregation, the, the people that prayed with her and wept with her and prayed with her family in the hospital and did Bible studies in her home and, and, and they worshiped together for years and they prayed together and rejoiced together at the altar. And she began to look at them as though they were the enemy because that's the way the devil works. That's right. She was convinced that they were all lying and the path she was on was right. I did make a long story short, I'll tell you what she did. She finally had a very blown up fight with her pastor and she took her whole family and she left the church. And she's never gone back. Every one of her kids are backslidden today. Some of them are in drugs. 
One of them was in prostitution uh, for a little while. I don't know if they're still doing that uh, or not. Uh, uh, the one boy, he cusses worse than any soldier I've ever met in the military. I mean, they're so far removed from what they were when they were going to church. And it's because she made a choice not to follow the stone. That's right. God showed me a new way. God showed me a new revelation. God showed me that you're wrong and I'm right. And she stopped following the stones and she led her family out into the kingdom of darkness. Let me tell you, unless the mercy and grace of God prevails, unless they repent and come back to God, amen, she's dragging her whole family to hell with her. Oh, amen. And I know that sounds hateful, but I'm here to tell you, if you stop following the way, the straight and narrow way that leads to life eternal, there's only one other path, and that's the broad way that leads to destruction. Any voice that tries to tell you that your pastor is just trying to deceive you because it don't take all of that, you need to cut that out of your life Amen. because that's going to lead you down the same rabbit trail that it led that lady. Amen. I'm here to tell you, amen, I, I, I'm just a man and I'm not perfect. Amen. Amen. I'm just like anybody else. I fall short of the glory of God. Sometimes I probably say things I shouldn't say. Sometimes I probably act in ways I shouldn't act and respond in ways I shouldn't respond. I'm a human being. I'm a sinner saved by grace just like the rest of y'all. But God's placed a calling and an anointing on my life. Amen. He's placed me here to shepherd, amen, this congregation and defend off the wolves. Amen. Don't get mad at pastor when pastor's trying to chase off the wolves. The wolf cannot be domesticated. The wolf cannot be made a household pet. They're going to seek and, and devour those who they can. Those that, The sheep that are going to start distancing themselves from the rest of the flock, those are the vulnerable ones that the wolf comes in and picks off first. It's my job to pray fast and follow the leading of the Holy Ghost to say, hold on, that's going to take you to dangerous territory. That's going to lead you out where you're vulnerable and the enemy can attack you. Amen. Don't let anybody, anybody tell you that your pastor's trying to deceive you That's and trying right. to manipulate you and just trying to control you and feed your head full of lies. Amen. For, for three and a half years, I've stood in this pulpit and I've preached my guts out and we've sacrificed and I've given my all for this church. I've never lied to anybody and I never intend to lie to anybody. Anybody. I've got your best interest at heart. I'm not trying to hurt anybody, discourage anybody. Amen. I never want to lie to you. Don't listen to somebody out there telling you your pastor's feeding your head full of nonsense. Amen. I'm preaching straight out of the word of God. Amen. And if you have an argument with me, it's not with me, it's with my boss. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean this morning, but this lady, she still lives here in town. Amen. Her family's lost. Amen. I don't want Ethan and Elizabeth to be lost. I don't want them to miss out on heaven. I don't want to make choices that's going to lead them away from God and cause them to get offended at the preacher and cause them to get a, to where they become despondent to the church. I've seen it too many times over 21 years of ministry, 41 years of living in the church. I've seen it time and time again. Church splits, disgruntled saints, uh, amen, because they're listening to the wrong voices. And what happens is the kids are watching. They say, I thought we were supposed to follow the stones. And you're not following the stones. Well, that preacher's nothing but a snake in the grass. That preacher's nothing but a hypocrite. Sister so-and-so, I don't like her. Brother so-and-so, I don't like him. And your kids start watching all of this. And they start adopting these attitudes like church ain't important. I don't want involved in all of that if it's just drama. And I end up being lost. I end up on the path headed toward a devil's hell because we quit following the stones. That's right. I told you I'm not perfect. Several years ago, I went through something that was probably the darkest, worst storm in my life. I pray to God as long as I live that I never have to go through anything like that ever again. It shook me to the core. And I didn't always act right in the middle of that storm. And I did not always respond right in the middle of that storm. I didn't always make the right choices. Amen. And I can't even tell you that I was following the stones in the middle of that storm because I got bitter at the preacher. I got offended at the church. 
I got upset at the situation. The storm was rocking me left and right, to and fro. And I was getting better instead of bitter. There was a season in my life that I looked back on and I say that that was painful. That was confusing. That, that hurt more than anything that I could possibly vocalize. But God in his wisdom and his mercy. See, here's the thing. We may let go of God's hand, but he will never let go of your hand. Amen. Amen. You're holding to the hand of the everlasting arm that is attached to one Jesus Christ. And he loves you boundlessly, unconditionally, then nothing, Paul said, can separate us from the love of God. There's no choice that we've made. There's no decision that we've acted on. There's no thought and motive. There's nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. God will always love you. And as a result, his mercy and grace are working actively in your life. Trying to say, let's get back on the stones. Amen. Let's get back on the stones. Let's continue to walk in the apostles' doctrine. Let's walk, amen, on the foundation that my church is laid on, that of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Don't deviate from the stones. As long as you walk on the stones, you're headed to victory. The walls of Jericho are coming down. As long as you follow the stones, you're headed toward the promised land. As long as you follow the stones, God is going to go before you, beside you, amen, behind you. He's going to be with you. But the moment you leave the stones and you try to make your own way, amen, you don't have those assurances. Can we close our eyes and just begin to talk to the Lord all across this place? I close with this tonight as we begin to call on the name of the Lord. I love you more than I could possibly expre express. I love you. I would lay down my life for any member of this church. I have given everything I could possibly give, and I will continue to do so till the Lord calls me home. I am for you and not against you. Amen. I'm trying to fend off the wolves because I have seen what you have not seen. I have been where you have not been. I have witnessed what you have not yet witnessed. And I know a thing or two. I'm telling you, the wolves are, are trying to seek you out and pick you out from the flock. Follow the stones. Just follow the stones. And everything is going to be all right. It was the love of Jesus, not the nails, that held him to Calvary's cross. It was the love that Jesus had for you and for me that fixed him to that old cruel tree. His love held him there, immovable and steadfast. When people dared him and said, if you're really the one, if you're really the Christ, come down, and then we'll believe. His love said, I'm hanging on. I'm going to continue to stay here. Child of God, it's your love for God. And it's your love for the body of Christ that's going to help you follow the stones. It's going to help you stand still and see the glory of God in your home and in your family. It's, it's, it's your love for Jesus. It's, it's your love for Jesus that's going to help you stand the test of time when the trials come, when the blows roll, the waves come against you. It's your love for truth. It's your love for Jesus. It's your love for his church that's going to say, I'm not Amen. I'm going to be in this thing for the long haul. I'm going to keep following the stone until I hear the last trump of God's sound and Jesus comes to get his bride. Can we pray? Let's lift our voices all across this house. wrestling flesh and blood. We're wrestling, we're wrestling against things that are spiritual. And the only way that you can prevail against the spiritual is not through intellect, but through prayer, through warfare in the spirit. Paul says, 
groanings and utterances that cannot be understood. We need to let go and let the Holy Ghost pray through us today. Amen. There's some strongholds here in Long that are coming down. There are some high places that the devil has set up in this city that God's about to tear down. We're about to have the greatest revival Long has ever seen. The devil's trying to stop it out before it has a chance to start. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church.
love the Lord one more time all across this place. Hallelujah. As you've been, got your hands lifted. Let's lift up Sister Richard right now. Lord Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we call on that name that is above every name. Lord, you did it once before, and we're asking you to do it again. I'm asking you to move on HRC. I'm asking you to move on her command. I'm asking you, Lord, to stop this deployment to Korea, Lord. God, we're asking you, Lord, to cancel that and keep her here, Lord, that she can continue to bring her family to the house of God. Lord, that she continue, Lord, to come to the house of God and worship you, Lord, and enter into your presence. We're asking you, Lord Jesus, to move in this situation. Lord, we know that you are aged. We know that you are great, and we give you all the praise, Lord. We thank you for your presence in this house. We thank you for what you're doing. And, Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, cover us with your blood. Bind us together, Lord. One mind, one spirit, one accord. Help us, Lord Jesus. Anoint us, each and every one. Take us forward in the mighty revival. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Church, I love you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Um, before we leave, I have a couple of announcements. Um, starting next Sunday, we're going to have a little bit of change in the format of service. Um, Pastor, I discussed already. Um, so next Sunday, we're going to have Sunday school again. Um, so from 10 to 10.30, we'll do Sunday school. Um, and then we'll do regular service. So we'll be here a little longer. Fair warning. Maybe not. But... Um, <laughs> Lord. We're here a little longer, fair <laughs> morning, but we're going to have Sunday school starting next week. Um, also, um, I want to start something, I'm going to call it Second Sunday Supper, and so next Sunday will be the first Second Sunday. Um, I'll let Sister Doc guy help me with it. Um, we're going to start doing a potluck every month. So next Sunday is, I kind of want to do like themes maybe, about like whatever is going on in like the month or whatever, and so... Um, next Sunday is going to be Valentine's Day, too, so we're going to do Valentine's, and we're going to make it, like, fun and whatever. Um, so just on second Sunday, supper days, just so, like, you know, maybe you need to bring a comfy pants to change into or something, you know, <laughs> um, because we're going to be here for a while. We're going to do potluck and just hang out and whatever, okay? Cool. Um, also, we're going to start uh, doing uh, church prayer. On Tuesday at 7, we can make it. Um, and it'll just be like 30 minutes, an hour, something like that. And then um, we're going to practice on Saturdays for um, Sunday, okay? Um, and always add you to Wednesday Bible service, so. Which is also live. If you can't make it, then you can watch it later, so. All right? Love you guys.